This is the Stock Train Reality Podcast, episode 51. Yeah, so instead of being on the train like I'm doing now, I'm just getting hit by it. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host. He has experience with lasers like real lasers. Clay Trader. Yeah, that is absolutely right. A little bit of background information. I'm an engineer by degree and my first job out of college, was out in Kansas City. I worked for Honeywell, ticker symbol H-O-N. Um, and I was in uh, what I did. I just worked in the welding department, but not welding where, like, you throw down your mask and start, like, you know, doing construction welding. Uh, we worked on very small parts and so small, in fact, that you needed lasers to weld them uh, because, you know, they were the parts needed to be put together with, you know, uh, tweezers and all sort of stuff like that. So these weld joints were about as small as you can get. When we measured the penetration, you know, how deep the weld actually was, you'd have to use a microscope and all that sort of stuff. So yes, I've actually worked with lasers and I used to work with lasers. Uh, it's not quite like a lightsaber or like, zzz, you know, nothing like that. Uh, but yeah, lasers exist and uh, all they are is amplified light put very closely together. And it's amazing what a bunch of light can do, highly amplified, it can like melt metal together. So it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, Chez, did you know that I used to work with lasers? I don't think so. I did not, but I remember when I was a kid and laser pointers were like the new thing and they yes. were very, very primitive to the point of, I don't even think they could make them the strength they, they were back then because people have harmed themselves. Me and my dad used to have a pair of binoculars and this laser pointer pen that he got from some really crazy tech magazine and we would shine it on things that were over a mile away. And now that I think about it, if if nowadays, if we shined a laser pointer pen on like a water tower, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody thought it was like a terrorist attack. So you can't really do that stuff anymore. That's for sure. But yeah, um, no. that's the closest I ever had to an experience with the laser. Yeah. And uh, that's a good point. Yeah. In this day and age, you know, who knows what the conclusion they would see on some red dot. Like, is that a sniper rifle or something? But yep. anyways, that's a whole rabbit hole. We're not going to go down. Uh, so let's actually talk about the interview. We are talking with Chase today. He goes by the same name in the chat room. And he is a Virginia Tech fan, so he, when his avatar in the chat room is their little mascot, the bird. I don't know if he has a name or not. My apologies to you, Virginia Tech Hokies fans out there. I don't know what your bird's called. but So that's how uh, hopefully members of the chat room will recognize Chase is just by that avatar. But uh, I had a lot of fun with this interview, and um, <laughs> Chase, <laughs> he did a lot of dumb things. Um, and I say that because I can relate to some of the things he did, but... Uh, as you'll see, there's a time when he was going in all sorts of directions. He was doing, I got to at least give one spoiler. One thing included, you know, using and knowing that he was using, uh, you know, delayed data. Uh, but Chez and I, you, we rake him over the coals pretty good, uh, but all in good fun just because both of us can relate to it. But uh, there's there's a lot of funny stuff in here just because it's so stupid. Uh, again, all relatable. That's why I sit here and say that because I did it too. I did plenty of stupid stuff. Ches did plenty of stupid stuff, uh, but it's still pretty just uh, interesting. But from where he was to where he is now, uh, we have a great conversation about trade journals and the psychology of things. So there's a, there's a lot of topics here that haven't been discussed on any other interviews. Uh, so we're, you know, I'm very excited for this. So uh, without further ado, let's just uh, get to Chase. Chase, welcome to the show. How you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. Ches, how are you doing? Whoa, I'm being asked how I'm doing within yeah, the first, first 10 minutes time. of the podcast. This is rare. Uh, I'm doing very well. Excellent, excellent. We little context. Uh, <laughs> after this, we have a live webinar for the Clay Trader University. And then Chase was kind enough to be like, hey, man, I have your guys' mic. I made a couple of trades today. If you're looking for somebody to interview, I'd be willing to do it. And I thought, hey, you know what? We haven't had an interview in uh, you know a few weeks. So right after this, Chase and I are going to hop back on to the live webinar, and I'm going to interview him about a couple of his trades today. So there's going to be a lot of Chase coming. Are you sure you're ready for all this, Chase? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty excited about the webinar. What, what makes you so excited about that? Most people are kind of nervous about that, that, to talk about their trades and stuff like that. Or you just, I mean, why, why are you so excited for it? I don't know. It's just kind of cool to do all this stuff. But um, also, I feel like 
from what I've seen from the webinars, my style is just a little bit different. It's nothing crazy, but just what we usually go over. So nice, nice. So I was hoping that you're gonna, you're gonna say so you can take some pot shots at Nate Wilson, but and yeah, that of course, yeah, of course. So uh, who knows if he'll listen to this? But if you are, mm -hmm. it's it's all in good fun. So all right, well, right now it's time for the podcast. So let's just start at the beginning of your whole journey, and I'm kind of interested because I know you're. Uh, into real estate and other stuff like that. So I'm kind of curious to see how all the pieces fit to fit together in your life. And, you know, we're just going to school mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But where did you first get started in terms of the market? How did you hear about it? And then what kind of pushed you over the ledge in terms of wanting to actually take action with it? Hmm. Well, um, my parents have been in the market for a while. I've heard um, when I was growing up, I always heard my dad talking about you know what he thought Ford was going to do. Ford's like his little, his pet stock that he loves. Um, <clears throat> so they actually got me some shares of Ford and stuff when I was growing up. And I pretty much let it set. And then when I was ending college, I, I, I don't know exactly how, but it came, the market came back up in some way. And I started to like, look at free videos on E-Trade and like I saw how much money you can make and everything. So I was like trying to kind of see what I could do. I opened a brokerage account there <clears throat> and I had a little bit saved up. I think it was like $500 or so. So I opened up an account there just so I could watch all their free videos since I was an account member. And um, by the end of that year, so this is probably like the six months after I graduated college. Um, by then I was over 18. So the account and stuff that my, my dad had bought for me, we had that with Morgan Stanley and it was like, it was headed by some guy, you know, he was managing everything. And so they signed everything over to me so that I'd be in control of everything and could buy and sell as I please. And, um, I pretty much was really excited about it. I was doing all the fundamental stuff. I was like trying to research into it. And so I'd come across these stocks that I thought like they had a lot of potential for the future. They were doing cool things and they seemed like they were good investments. Just no idea what I'm doing, but still just going off and thinking that, you know, how hard can it be really? Now, did you, I know you said you had done some research on YouTube and you were just kind of, you know, you heard about the market, you'd gone through the, the courses and videos that were listed kind of on your platform there. Now, did the whole appeal of penny stock, million dollar, thousand percent gains ever come into the picture at all? Or were you, did you not even stray down that path? Oh, um, it's weird because when I started off, I was watching all those E-Trade videos, and they were extremely boring. I understood yeah. nothing. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure YouTube videos, but I, it's like, I think you said E-Trade videos too. And if I'm thinking of the right thing, some of those broker videos, they're pretty brutal. So sorry to cut Thank you off. Thank you for using I, I, the E-Trade platform. This is, we're going to be looking at how to use yeah. this fundamental <laughs> study today. Yeah, those are the E-Trade videos. Yeah. Oh, man. I was watching the options videos when I first opened up my E-Trade account, and it was, I was like, why would anyone ever trade options? They make no sense. And then like, it's so funny. And then when, with your course, and if you really understand how options work, it's not difficult at all. It's kind of funny. Like now when I try to explain it to just anyone else or like, just stop talking, nothing makes sense that you're talking about. But no, from there, actually, I think I didn't really have enough money to trade. I, I liked the, the aspect of possibly making a whole bunch of money in the stock market. So then I kept looking around and that's when I started to go to YouTube and just pretty much Googling things. And I came across, you know, the... Just out of curiosity, because I like to try to ask people this, Googling things. Do you remember any of the phrases that you Googled? Just because I think some of them can kind of be funny. Oh, oh man. Was it just some, was it like the boring stuff, like how to trade or were you actually typed in like hot stock picks, hot alerts or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I basically wanted to be like, I wanted somebody to tell me what to buy and then it for it to make it like a million dollars and me go and that'd be it. And I'd retire at 22 and just sleep a lot. But so. So if I you ever I run a site someday that promises like, follow me, it's is a, is a cover image of your site going to be you just sleeping? 
follow me and you get to sleep a lot is that because that's if that's your dream scenario i mean that might be a pretty bad marketing angle on your part just kind of you know thinking out loud here but <laughs> i don't think anybody's ever said i just, i wanted to make a million dollars so i could sleep a lot that's hey, interesting that, that's relax. funny though I'm just saying there's a lot of people in my class, if you told them that you could make a lot of money and they wouldn't have to do anything but sleep, they would have taken it right up. <laughs> no, it's, that, that, uh, it, sleeping is nice. I just I don't think we've ever heard that answer before mm-hmm. in terms of people's dreams and am- ambitions on why they want to make a bunch of money. But uh, go ahead. Keep on going. This is funny. Yeah, I just want – I pretty much just wanted to have a really relaxed life and I, I just – I hate the nine-to-five jobs. So – um, I guess what I'm trying to get at when I was saying sleep a lot is I just could be my own boss and have that freedom. But so when I was Googling things, I didn't even know trading was a thing. I thought it was more or less just investing. And then I came across like the actually the penny stock people that Chaz was bringing up. So one of them was like, give me $400 a month. You can follow my alerts. I text you everything to trade. Um, Pretty much saying he's going to hand me money, his track record, he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars, he's in a nice suit, um, you know. And then Give there's the initials another, of this person. Um, he, I'm not sure of his specifically, but he was like a colleague of T.S. Ah, gotcha. All right. So at the same Got time it. I found them, I found um, your videos. And this was, this was about the time when I added a little bit more money into my brokerage account and was actually looking at possibly trading penny stocks. And so I had a couple of investments that I made on my own from the brokerage account from the guy with Morgan Stanley. And um, they weren't going well, not at all. I never won at all when I first started off. But this was his, this was not you doing anything, right? This was the guy who was actually dictating where your money was going, right? No, I would would do fundamentals basically, um, which I really didn't even know (laughs) Like I didn't even have a strategy down for the fundamentals. I'd just be like, oh, well, this is performing well and looks like it could be good. And then I'd call him up. I'd be like, so, hey, there's a stock I've heard about. Here's what it is. What do you think? And he'd be like, no, I mean, it sounds like a good stock. And then that'd be it. <laughs> so he's, he was your broker then? Yeah, he's my broker. Okay, all right. Maybe, maybe you already said that. I thought I, I thought he was more like a financial advisor doing stuff. So, well, of course it looks good because if you buy shares, what, Chaz, as as your broker, what, what does this guy get? He gets to take his wife out to a steak dinner with your commission. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's that's pretty funny. That Oh, yeah, that sounds like a good – well, of course it sounds good. He's not going to be like, no, don't buy shares because then his wife's got to eat mac and cheese. So, I mean, anyways, <laughs> all right. So now that, that's making sense is – your own investments, but you're just going through your broker who's saying, yeah, that sounds good because he wants those commissions. So um, do you remember what they were? Were they big board stocks or were these actually like penny stocks? Um, so I'm going kind of back and forth here because a lot's going on at the same time with like me researching things and me, me trying to trade. But um, the ones that I was buying from him were big board stocks. So um, if you looked one up, I remember TPLN which is doing terrible now. I'm glad I'm, I'm no longer in that one, but um, that was when I got, he recommended XLE, so we know how that's doing. Oh, yeah, good and, um, That was actually, between that and then once I actually found out what his commissions were, were like the point when I was like, why am I even, why am I even with this guy? He doesn't know anything, you know? And so I had XLE, TPM, and Micron, and oh, man, but regardless, they just weren't going well, right? It was just everything was just bleeding on you. Well, I had one that was bleeding pretty much from the start, and then the remainder weren't doing anything. And then one that actually was a really good I got I got lucky, I guess, and it gapped up and had a nice win. But with his commissions taken out, what should have been like I think it was five hundred dollars was like maybe three. Wow. So, yeah. Well, this guy's commissions were insane. Yeah. It was like a hundred and eighty dollar commission. I'm pretty sure buying in like ninety and ninety out. Man, Chaz, we were talking a steak dinner with crab legs on the side after after with that kind of commission. Throw a couple appetizers in there too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. So, I I mean you did, I didn't know up front how much his commissions were. Obviously, because so, I you'd be out of your mind to have paid that. But that's what I can relate to because that's how my first trade went. I didn't use a broker, but I would use my community banks platform and it was $60, $60 to buy, $60 to sell. 
So my first trade that I thought was profitable, I had to pay $120 in commissions on. So I, I, I feel your pain. That's why I'm laughing yeah. at you because I've definitely been there before. So about the same time I found all the penny stock guys, I found um, one of them. Okay, so the one that did well, I sold. The other one that started bleeding on me, I found one of your, your charts on on YouTube. And um, I was clearly like, I don't, I was quick to know that I don't understand what's going on. You know, like I'd try to, this was at the time too, that I'd tried a couple of penny stock trades, nothing, nothing big. Um, and I saw your, your chart and I was basically hoping that the stock would turn around that like I would be okay. The, the forecast would be good. And, um, I just saw that it seemed like, you knew what you were talking about. So it's more into your program. <clears throat> and so about the same time I was talking to the other penny stock gurus. You have all sorts of stuff going on at once right now. I just have to, I know you already prefaced that, but holy crap, man, you no wonder why you were like a lost little puppy dog or something. Just being led in a bunch of different directions. Yeah. Yep. Good grief. So well, like I was, I was researching constantly. Like, I just want to say I was, non-stop looking to see I, I don't like losing money at all so i was trying to find out who would be best i quickly learned that this place is full of people who are just don't know anything and are quick to market and take your money so i wanted to make sure that whoever i was buying something from actually knew what they were doing so i could learn how to do this properly because that's pretty much what it came down to this guy who was going to charge way more than what you were just because your your inner circle was only a hundred dollars, so I, was, I figured I'd try it out and see what it was like. The other guys was four times that amount, and I just there was something about it I wasn't comfortable with. So all that's going on, and I'm talking to um the other guru who is I guess like a colleague of TS's, and um. Basically, it came down to your CTU program or his like star student, some some hyped up marketing thing. And so I had actually bought your robotic trading course at this time and was reading books and websites all throughout this time about just technical analysis. And um, It just came together where he sh he sent me some of his material, so I had yours to, your yours to judge on, and then sent he sent me his, and it was it was videos of basically them just patting themselves on the back and talking about how much money they made, and instead of actually teaching anything of use, so I decided to go with your program. Um, so while that's going on, I still have not stopped trading. Like I had, I opened an account with E Trade with five hundred to start off with. And uh, that 500 went to Micron, and then I put another 1500 in to trade penny stocks. I figured, you know, if that should be plenty. Um, and that if I knew what I was doing, I'd make money from there because these gains are outrageous in the penny stock world, and now, people have made uh, more with less. What year was this that you got interested in, in penny stocks right then for that specific account? Was this during the marijuana hype or was this after the boom had already happened or I, I want to kind of get a, a sense of when it was. Yeah, this is all I think right after. So, I mean, so you're, you're in the dump of the whole thing as the market is slowly coming to its, its inevitable death as we're witnessing now in the beginning of 2016. Yeah, I mean just the best way to describe penny stocks in general is a dump but um, – <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't actually really trading in the marijuana stocks. I came in right after that. And the so big the dust kind of settled already then? Like, the, the, yeah. the, the, there was no bloodshed anymore either? It was like the bubble had popped? Mine, mine, for the whole entire thing that like, because remember, all this happened in probably a span of four months. Right. So all this that I've just t talked about. Um so when I got in there, the big hype was Ebola. Everyone was going to die of okay. Ebola. Yeah. So when you got in, the the marijuana traders' dead bodies were already scattered everywhere because it had already popped. So on the bright side of things, it's not like you came in during the actual poppage. It had popped. There's dead bodies everywhere. All these marijuana people, you know, they're all bleeding Kool-Aid, and it's just a, a gory scene. But now you're with Ebola. Gotcha. All right. So... Um, I now specifically remember at this point. So, uh, and penny stocks, 
have never been the same ever since that, uh, you know, the, the bubble popped. I'm sure at some point they'll come back, but right now uh, they're pretty bad. So this is kind of a, a terrible time to be getting into that stuff anyways, you know, within your journey because just low volume all over the place. But so, you know, kind of where did things go from here? I mean, did you make any good penny stock trades at all or? It, no, you know, literally what? none. Not even one. That was closer great. to my experience with it, really. I think I had one out of maybe fifteen. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling you, Chase, on that. And it was funny too, as I had like, I started to have like paper trading apps on my phone, and I used some. I started like, I understood a lot of basic technicals at that point, and so like, there was one SLTD, which is like a Solar City, whatever, or Solar um, Powered Penny Stock. And I had a really good paper trade on that, but all of my actual trades were like terrible. I remember like specifically I was working, I was working at a bank at the time in uh, basically the, the town that I went to college at and <laughs> we had like a community work day. So I'm on this site sp- trying to help out um, basically renovate and paint a house and stuff. And I was really interested in the Ebola because like Ebola was popping off. So I, there were like two that were supposed to be under the radar for that day. And I would literally go into the bathroom, try to trade. So I'd like place a trade and then go and like try to tear up some rugs. And then 20 minutes later, the thing had like dumped on me and I would just get out. And I would, that happened like twice throughout the day. I tried to do two different trades and so did people was, think at work that you had like irritable bowel syndrome or something like that where you had to go to the bathroom every 15, 20 minutes? I mean, were people giving you the kind of fishy eye? Like, why is this guy going, you know, what's what's his problem? Did he have, uh, you know, Mexican food for lunch or something? Or, I mean, did this stick out to anybody that you were constantly going to the bathroom? Well, luckily I was, I was like partnered with another person and he was really laid back. So I was like constantly on my phone. So, I mean, first of all, try to picture just trading penny stocks without like having yeah, a full penny platform. stocks and phone. Those are like two cuss words in the same sentence. When yeah, combined, exactly. It's like chemistry. There's certain words. They in go trading. hand in hand. They yeah, it's like chemistry. Do. If you combine them in the same sentences, they become like a bad word. So, yeah, penny stocks and phone in the same sentence. Com- combination, bad word. So I don't like where this is going, Chase, but take us down the path anyways. So like in the morning before I went to work, I, I plotted out like, I knew support and resistance at that time. I was like, if it gets over this level, it's going to go crazy. So by the time I checked it, it was already over the level. And not to mention on the phone, the E-Trade quotes were 15 minutes delayed. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> so, this is bad, man. This is bad. So, yes. Yeah, Wait, so did, but did you that. know they were delayed or no? Um, yeah, I think I knew. I think I knew. So you knew that they were they're delayed, but yet you didn't really care enough. But you were still going to use this data. Is that correct? Well, I thought by the time that that that's not what I asked. You did yeah. you know that they were delayed, and you consciously said, you know what? I know they're delayed, but I don't care. This trading stuff's fun. I'm just going to use this data. Guilty. Were, Throw the book at him. Throw the yeah. book at him. Are you guilty of that? Yes, but in the sense that I thought it would keep going. <laughs> There is no but here. You're guilty. Fine. Okay. But I'm just proving a point here that that's how fun trading is because the outside listener, that might, that may sound very goofy, but I understand. I mean, it's fun, man. I want to trade. I want to make some money. Not nah, 15 minutes. That's fine. That's only 15 minutes. But uh, for you listeners out there, don't do that. I realize trading is super fun. I realize there can be money to be made, but don't do that. Are, are, is that good advice, Chuz? It's good advice, and it's funny. At the time of this recording, I'm waiting eight more minutes for the crude market and the e-mini market to open up. So yes, it is fun, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you definitely got to kind of know when to put it on the line and when not to. And 15 minute delays, you know, he wanted to hop on the Momo train. I know what he was trying to do. I totally get it. But, um, but yeah, it it is fun, and it can be uh, it could definitely lead to some some large losses if you're you're just trying to put your money to you know have fun versus make good trades. So anyway, so this is you're in the middle of a train wreck here. So keep on going. You're trading based on your phone, based on delayed data. So let's where does this go from here? And before hold on, before I go from there, I want to just say that this it's kind of similar to my, the style I do now, like in the sense of the momentum Great, train. So you're trading 15 minutes delayed right now. Fantastic. You have no, no, no. <laughs> just just the momentum part, but um, yeah. So instead of being on the train like I'm doing now, I'm just getting hit by it. <laughs> constantly that, that's so, a good quote there 
So instead of trying to catch the the back of the train and you know hitchhike across the country, he's just laying on the tracks waiting for the train. I got it. I got it. Yep. Yeah, it's it's like walking in front of the tracks and just head on. But I would like I like I said, I mean that's the thing I got to pat myself on the back for is I was quick. I was always quick to get out. Like I never put a lot on a trade, so I was managing that right off the bat. And very nice, very nice. So I just you know I was. Always quick to lose, which is good, and I never won. So I mean, that's that was a blessing for me is that I never had any good winners in the penny stock market. But it was also a blessing that you were quick to lose, so you never had any winners. But I'm I'm assuming you sold some probably way too soon. But at least, like you're saying, you just your losses were small because a you said you were using a small position size, and if b if you're just quick to lose in terms of just I'm out of here, well. I, I think both are probably blessings in disguise uh, in the sense of, you know, you, you kept your risk under control where some past people have had just total blowout trades where it, you know, eats a whole chunk of their account. But it sounds like your account just kind of fluctuated maybe back and forth or was it, were you depleting it? Like what was the status of your actual account at this time? Well, here's, yeah, here's how it went. I, I start off with 2000, I think, and then I had the... 500 it was in it was in micron and that actually made me money so i did well in that <clears throat> and sold pretty much at the highs so i'm not in micron anymore but um it was pretty much steadily down and the thing that also that i'm gonna get grilled for right now i'm sure is commissions at e-trade were ten dollars oh. ten dollars to get out oh my yep and it was like you had to do 30 trades i think to get to use their platform and so <laughs> please don't tell me that you were just making trades for the sake of getting up to that number so you could use their platform. Oh yeah, in the beginning I was. Oh good. This is bad, man. This is hey, bad. Hey man, it would have been live data, not fifteen minutes delayed. So yeah, you go ahead and pound out the three hundred dollars <laughs> worth of you uh, forced commissions those for trades. It. Yeah, you, you forced those, those trades, on. yeah. Pretty much yeah, twenty so. twenty bucks round trip and thirty of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you think about that, even if they're just all break even trades, that's still six hundred dollars. Off of two thousand. I mean, that's you know, and trying to trying to basically buy a platform. So it was really I didn't had no idea what I was doing really. Um, but I was like, I I realized that as soon as I got down, I got down to about five hundred dollars left in my account, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do one more trade, and if it doesn't work, then I'm going to buy one of the programs and learn what I'm doing. And so, it, I mean, it didn't work out. Luckily, I, lo- I lost like I think it was a hundred dollars or something. And then I was like, okay, I need to buy more courses and really just spend time learning and studying what to do. It's amazing that brings up a, a, a interesting psychological standpoint. Is you had been getting you know hammered, lost, lost, two thousand dollars down to five hundred, and yet some voice, something in your mind, tricked you to the point of you know what, just one more. Just one more. Just that maybe all this other stuff was just like a flaw in the system, and maybe it was all just you know. Not it, it, it's not. I I don't know. But just one more. It's uh. I don't know. To me, it's fascinating how the mind works. To where after all that, the mind could convince you to to give it a try one more time, and surprise, surprise, you lost money. So yeah. uh, it's. I don't know. Chaz, any comments on that? Just because it's a it's an interesting topic. If not, that's fine. But I think no, it's a kind it of is a cool discussion point. Because I've been there before, and you tell yourself, you know, this one time, you know, I'll give it a chance to be different. But if you're doing the same exact thing, you always get the same exact result. So I was there. I I had an account stop limit as well that I had to do, and I also had that moment where I said, I'm going to do one more trade, and you know, if it doesn't work out, then I really need to rethink everything I'm doing. So yeah, it's it's amazing how the psychology plays into this. So you chase you lost a hundred dollars. That if my math's right now, you have about four hundred dollars left. And at this point, you decide, you know what, I'm going to get a program. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, I forgot what they were at the time, but that was pretty much like my cutoff. I was like, I'm going to use this and start investing in education instead, since I'm just basically slowly bleeding. I mean, I, I was quick to realize I didn't know anything, and there had to be something more to it, since people were making a living doing it. So where did you go? I mean, was it CTU that you got or did you go with somebody else's program? Where did you go from this part you know, of your journey? Walk us down this path now. Um, well, you might remember me emailing you about it a little bit. 
I, you know, this is where I was researching. I'll be honest. I do not remember. The only thing I remember about you is you're young, you do real estate and you were a nutrition major in college. But any other, anything else? Sorry, man. I, I can't say that I remember. I'd be lying. Well, it was a while ago, too. I mean, I think I joined CTU. Yeah, you've been around for a long time. So in my defense, this was this email exchange had to have been like multiple years ago. Yeah, it was it was about it was probably a little over a year ago when I first started. And so I was yeah, I was before I bought in anything, I just wanted to know that I was buying buying something that people knew, well, the people that were teaching actually knew what was going on and I could learn how to profit instead of having to basically be at somebody else's mercy. So I was looking in your program and the other one that I was discussing and the other one was twice as much and the material didn't seem half as good. So I went with um, your program and then I pretty much just spent the next couple of months just sitting around the chat. I mean, I was talking to everybody in the chat room trying to figure out, you know, what the people who were doing that worked well, what their strategy was and how I could do it. And then I was also just learning all the courses. Um, so I was probably, I was probably watching videos at least three hours a day and had a full time job at the same time. And um, you're in school, right? No, all this, all this happened. Like my entire journey happened probably in the last year and a half. So I graduated in May of 2014. My brokerage trades with Morgan Stanley were probably August. Okay. Okay. So when I got into CTU and everything, I remember I, I fully got into CTU. Uh, that was my Christmas present to myself. That's ho, a, ho, ho. the gift of continuous education right there. <laughs> yeah. So I was pretty much just watching everything and trying to learn as much as I could then at that point. And how long did you actually, you said two months, but what, did it go longer than that? Were you, and I know you're paper trading, but how long did it, you actually stay in this phase of just hitting the books, hitting the videos, hitting, you know, just studying? How long did all that, uh, you know, last for? Uh, I mean, so I would say probably once I actually got CTU, it took me, two months, two to three months to fully go through everything. And then, so I watched like every single video you had out at the time, every single course, I uh, wrote everything down to in a journal. And then I probably rewatched, I definitely rewatched robotic trading and skill sharpening and RVR. So trading journals are something that, uh, you know, a ton of people either, you know, started to, who are successful have been applying for years or, you know, getting into trading, it's highly recommended that they do that. So what uh, type of information are you writing in that trading journal? So I have two. Um, when I was studying, I have basically every everything that's written on clay slides, I wrote down by hand because it just sticks better for me. So not only was I listening to him say it, but then I wrote it, stopped it, wrote everything down and then went through it again. And then my actual trading journal that I use every day currently um, maps every paper trade I've ever done and all of my live trades. So what I have on that is the time, uh, the ticker. So the ticker will have what position I'm going short or long and then the share size and everything. And then I have the price that it happens at. I actually have a column for feeling slash thought. So how I'm feeling at the time, like if I'm being irritated for whatever reason in the morning or if I feel like I'm being, you know, trying to rush to get into a trade, then I'll put that there. Just any other notes. And then my final and most important column is reasons for entry and exit and strategy number. I have three strategies all numbered and written down in my book. So I have mechanical rules that I follow. There's still a little bit of flexibility to it. And then I actually added one recently um, one more column, which is cause of error. So when I go through and then I see what I did wrong, like I'm noticing that my biggest problem currently um, is patience or going against the market. So let's say I have a, a stock that I'm trying to go long, but then, or I'm trying to go short, but then the market is at support, you know? So it's a lot to analyze because I'm usually on the one to two minute charts. So everything's moving quick, but um, I, yeah. I got a question for you. Uh, and maybe I'm misunderstanding or maybe this is only d happening during paper trades, but you said you have a, a column for emotions and like how you're feeling at the time of the trade. And y you made the comment, 
you know, of, you know, so if I feel like I'm kind of rushing into a trade or if I'm kind of being irritated or whatever. So are you telling me that when you're filling this out, like you could physically type, I feel like I'm rushing into a trade and then do you still go and do that trade or is this all, or are you filling out that emotion column like afterwards? How, how exactly is that? So how does that work from a logistics standpoint? Because to me, it doesn't make sense if you're sitting there typing, I feel like I am rushing into a trade and then you go and put on the trade. Well, didn't you just tell yourself that that's probably not a good idea because you just documented that you're rushing into it or am I thinking way too much into what you said? Kind of. Well, here's what I'm kind of trying to do too. And I don't want to, get all, um, I guess, psychological and weird on it, but there's oh, going to be like psychology that, on, on the, uh, the podcast. So let's, let's get weird. Let's get weird. Yep. So there were, there were two books that a bunch of people in the chat room were reading at the time. And I've, I've got a couple other ones on trading psychology and they all, the really good ones I've found have like kind of endorsed mindful meditation. And so that's something I've been trying to do every day before the market opens that half hour before I've already done my scans and everything, know what's going on. And then I'll do that. And that's also what that column is kind of to do is to help me try to pay more attention to what I'm feeling before I get into a trade. So like for instance, today's I have, um, and sometimes I, at the time you won't notice it. you won't notice what you're really feeling. And then that, that column lets me go back and be like, okay, I was actually feeling like this. So a lot of the times I'm putting down when I'm getting in and I'm in a clear mind, I'm just putting calm. So that's good. That's what I want to be in. But today, like my first trade of the day, uh, today I actually, um, I put rush and anxious. And that's not something that I put in at that time, but I liked the setup. And then it, it didn't trigger properly, but it triggered at how my mind put it as good enough. So I still got in. And so when I'm writing everything up after um, that happened, I, I realized that you know, I was rushing into something. It wasn't quite what it should have been. Does that make sense? It does, but I'm, I'm going to maybe try to provide some constructive criticism. So my question to you would be, because I, I don't know the answer to this, was this trade that you filled in afterwards, was it a losing trade? It was. Okay, so let me ask this. What If it was a winning trade, do you think you would have went back and filled in the column as being rushed and anxious, or do you, would you have went back and filled in that column as being calm? No, because I also, I guess that's the other thing I left out in my journal is I um, award myself points. I have a, I have like a kind of a little system that I have, but I award myself points based on how I follow my system, not if I make or lose money. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying, like I said, constructive criticism. I, I, I'm just trying to make sure that hindsight is not influencing your spreadsheet because if you know that you lost, is somehow in your mind saying, well, you know, it was a losing trade, so therefore I must have done something wrong. So, you know... Do you, know, do you see what I'm saying is... No, yeah, I understand it. I understand okay. exactly what you're saying, and I try to make sure that 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 never gets in to become a problem with you know, my journal and everything, but... Um, I mean, it's, like I said, I'm, this is awesome. I, I'm fascinated by this in your journal. I'm just trying... I'm just, you know, like I said, none of this is scripted, so I'm just, you know... Yeah. Um, you know, what I see is put some maybe potential pitfalls there, but sounds like you have some pretty good safety protocols in place to to make sure that, you know, you're not totally like lying to yourself or anything. Yeah. And so, um, that's what's kind of tough too, is depending on how fast it's moving, I might not have a chance to write it down in the journal, right? but I try to just note how I'm feeling at the time. And then no matter what, write that same down. So that way, you know, how it turns out won't affect what I'm putting down in the journal. But what I try to also do is I have kind of like a little system that I just, you can award yourself marks or whatever. And this is, this is like a nice little nugget for somebody who's, maybe struggling but has a good strategy is if you know your strategy is good and you're following it well, then award yourself points based on how you follow your strategy instead of if you make or lose money. Because that's what I was doing a lot at first was I would have my portfolio and position manager up and then I would see the fluctuation of everything going and then I wouldn't be focusing on the trade as much. So basically as long as I have one trade that I follow perfectly, I get you know a line or my thing is I made up just is called the trading triforce. So kind of like off of Zelda a little bit, but you get one triangle out of the triforce for every trade you do right. So then you want to get three and then you give yourself a, a gift. Maybe you take yourself out or you, you buy yourself a new book you want or something like that. What I love about all of this and it, you know, Clay, feel free to chime in is that the whole focus 
is on the process, which is such a disconnect for most people who get into trading because they only want to see, they don't care about the process. They only want to see their account Let explode me, into, into value. Hold that thought, Chess, but when Chess says process, also put a slash mark in your brain as a listener and put habits. Because that's, I fully agree, but I would just throw in that word habit. So continue on, Chaz, but process and habits. You know, most people just want to, you know, put it all on red or black, and that's not really how trading is. And the thing is, is that it is very, very discouraging, especially as a new trader. And like I said, I'm speaking from experience, and anybody who's a trader will completely agree with me, I bet, is that it's extremely frustrating to form a good trade plan, a logical trade plan, one that you would take over and over again because it, it is highly probable that you will make money on it. But when it doesn't, does it work? Not all trades work. When that trade doesn't work, it hurts you, and it makes you think, "Oh man, this stuff is crap. I'm just gonna, you know, either revenge trade to get it back or something like that." And that's not what it is. You need to focus on making those good plans over and over again, and that's how you succeed in the long term. But the, that process, those habits, your focus on it. It's amazing. That's exactly what needs to be done, and I'm glad you figured that out. You know, closer to the beginning of your journey rather than you know, ten years down the line. Yeah, because ten years down the line, there's going to be you're going to be corrupted with bad habits all over the place. So it's good that you're focused on putting in those good habits. So all right, we just had an epic conversation about a trading journal, which is awesome. But where are you at, like right now? What are you trading? Um, you know, and kind of you know what? Just just tell us about where you're currently at right now. Uh, you know, at this status in your journey. Well, I'm actually. This is probably the best time for you to interview me because the end of last year, I was. Um, well, let me let me restart. I guess I'm trading a margin account, doing stocks, and I have um, specific pre market criteria that I look for um, for every stock that I'm trading. And don't give that away, though. We'll talk about that tonight on the webinar. But yeah, yeah. So I'm looking. I'm just trying to trade those on the the one to two minute time frame, and um, I've actually had probably my the best month. And I was doing all this on paper until recently. I am live now. Um, but I had my best month in November. And then actually this past month, January, was my worst month ever. And not not loss-wise, but consistently losing. And so that's why I think, you know, we, I'm not going back to the trading journal topic. But I think that's so necessary because like this past week, I had a red week, which I'm completely okay with because I followed my process, went back, reviewed everything, checked over the charts again and made sure that if I saw this again, would it, would I do the same thing? And there were still a couple of errors or, you know, that's how it's going to be. You always have to improve, but for the most part, um, I did everything I should have done and I awarded myself those triangles and got a new book and moved on. So you're, it sounds like you're very happy with where you are right now within your trading. It sounds like the, the bad month that you had, uh, you learned quite a bit from that. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. And so that was what was really nice with the, the paper trading account is it's set up exactly like my live account. Um, and so I, it, it's basically no different for me. I don't see them. I don't see the numbers changing or anything with my, my balance. And so I'm still just focused on the process and I would do everything exactly the same in the paper account as I would if I was live. So like when I was having this terrible month, I scaled down in size. I started limiting myself in trades when I knew I was trading too much. So I would you know, put an artificial limit of three trades a day, then it went down to two, then it went down to one because I was doing so bad. So um, I think all that together really helps out. And I, that all this, all of that bad month, I think was just me being overly confident because I had like um, – a 12 day winning streak in November and I just pretty much thought I figured it out and I was ready to start thought I was Frickin ready to start trading live and sizing up Frickin' winning streaks. Those are the doom of, Oh yeah. man, for you listeners out there, the, the moment you start making mental notes and I am totally guilty of this. In fact, I have a blog. Post I that am, we'll, I am too. Yeah. That we'll link in the show notes about uh, how I had a, a nice month going and then, I all of a sudden started to focus on the winning streak, and then there was one where I got cute, and I lost like I don't know, like thirty five hundred bucks on it. I can't see why BR. I definitely remember the ticker symbol on that thing, but uh, yeah. So uh, we'll put that in the show notes if you want to read about that. But yeah, the minute you start focusing on streaks of any type, oh man, that plays all sorts of mind games with you. So don't focus on streaks, especially winning streaks, uh, because like Chase just said, overconfidence. Hey, I got this all figured out. 
Uh, in my case, from you know just uh, several months ago, it was I can get cute. I, I'll wiggle my way out of this. I mean, I'm you know I don't even remember what the streak was now, but you know I'm I'm gonna I'll make it work. And you know, yeah, I made it work all right, right to the tune of negative thirty five hundred bucks on the trade. So, um, but yeah, that that's interesting. That but that's good. You have identified that that was a soup that. That was a problem that a winning streak actually kind of led you astray. So, um, so you're doing just stocks right now, not doing any sort of advanced option trading or anything like that. Um, no, I was doing spread like spreads and options plays. I did research into all that and was doing spreads and stuff. But um, over the long term, it, it was it just wasn't working out for me. And like you said, I, I'm in real estate too, so I usually trade, get up at eight do my pre-market at 8.30 to 9 and then trade until 11. And so um, the rest of the day I'm at, I'm at a, usually at a site fixing up houses or doing whatever needs to be done, whatever random errands. And then I come back and re- review everything the rest of the day or partake in the webinar. So I, I wanted to take a, make a note and I should have probably done this, but what I found fascinating, Chez, if you want to chime in, please do. But when you had that bad month, it sounded like you went back to your trading journal, you went back to the charts, and you looked over. I mean, you. it sounds like you put a lot of time in it just looking back over everything. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, and if you don't, if you remember that one, I did send you an email that you re, you sent to RD. Oh, yeah, 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 and you sent it to RD. That's Yep, I totally remember so that. So that was like— Was that my, not an I, epic response on RD's part? Yeah, I mean, see, the thing it was— was like about, a 15-paragraph essay. I was just like, what kind of community is this? How? I mean— so shout out to you, Artie. That response uh, was just, yeah, I was just like, wow, look at people trying to help each other. So um, Yeah, Artie and, and Nate too. I mean, as much as Nate sucks and he's so small. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nate Wilson, Some, that is from, I think, episode nine and then from the two-year anniversary special. So he's kind of the punching bag of the community because he, well, he deserves it. But anyways, continue <laughs> on. No, but he's actually great because, I mean, I've had, before I really got my strategy refined and had everything written down was just following a plan, I would I would text him or call him up and be like, dude, I suck. What am I doing wrong? And he would just kind of talk to me about it and because he was doing well with the, the dead cat plays and they're just, they just don't, they work, but just not for me. So, um, Trading is a yeah, game was, of, yeah, trading is a game of got to find your personal preference. But the real quick point I wanted to make was, what Chase did, I, I just from sitting and listening, that was a whole ton of work. First off, just keeping the journal, then going back and figuring everything out. This is why Ches and I repeat over and over again, including here, you got to be passionate about this stuff. You got to like this stuff. You, you got to find it interesting. You got to like the challenge. You got to just be intrigued by uh, you know, the, the whole facet of it. Because if you're just in it for the money, you're not, it, it just doesn't work because there is a whole boatload of work as you're listening and hopefully seeing on Chase's part with just that one month alone. Where did I go wrong? What did I do wrong? Let me look at the charts. Look, look, look at me, look at the journal. That's a lot of work. And if you're just in it for the money, you're never going to do that. Therefore, you're never going to get better. And it's just not, you're not going to succeed. So please, please, please. Yes, you can make good money in the market. But if that's your only reason for doing it, Chez, don't do it, right? Yeah, there's there's no point. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it either. It's very tough. And, you know, I, I reside on the West Coast, so the market here actually opens, you know, before the sun even comes up. I'm not going to lie. When I've gone on a prolonged period of losing, it's tough to give your to, to try to get out of bed even and do that. But the thing is, I always put those two feet off the bed and walk to my office because I have a passion and that, you know, that drive to overcome my failures in the market is to find a way and, you know, like you said earlier, find what works for you, your personality and what meshes with it. And I'm not going to lie. You're going to get pushed to the absolute, you know, the, the part where you want to break and just cave and say uncle. Um, and then at that point, that's generally that, at least for me, that's where I found when everything just kind of fell into place after that, when I decided that I will not accept failure as an option. But yeah, you really have to love this stuff. Um, and I'm not going to lie, you know, it's, I, I look forward to doing it. I have charts up, you know, way too many hours of the day. Some would say that it's just ridiculous, but you know, I love charts. I love the markets. I love how they work. And you know, without that passion, um, you're going to have a real hard time. I'm, there's, there's no line about that. Yeah. If you're looking at this stuff as like a job, like, Oh great. I got to go look at charts and all oh, great. I got to go figure out then don't do this stuff. You got, it's, it's a job, but at the same time, 
you know, it's, it's like my dad used to tell me, you know, you find something that you love to do and then you don't have to ever work a day in your life. So, but if you're looking at this as all a bunch of work, then you, you just have no chance at all. So Chez, I think this, or not Chez, Chase, strengths and weaknesses. I, I want to, we like to ask this question and I think it pertains especially well with your, your diary. So what are some things that you would say you feel are, are your great strengths, some things that you're doing very well? And then what are some things that you, you know, you'd call probably a weakness that you want to work on and get better at? Um, I would definitely say a strength is I'm always quick to lose. Like I, I've never really let any, any losers get out of control. Um, another one is usually my entries are good. So, um, I, I follow like just a very mechanical system. So that makes my, ability to have an error that much less, but weaknesses would definitely be I'm impatient. Um, I get bored really quickly, which is why I can, Uh-oh. I can definitely only trade for two hours. And he recognized it though. That's a huge Yeah, that's strength. good. That's true. That's true. Yeah. You recognized it. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing the, the I think the, the mindfulness really helps because like last Friday I was just, I was in a weird mood and I could just tell I was, and it's time to step away. Cause this is the only job that can take your money when you're doing bad. So you kind of got to, I think that's another strength, I guess, too, or a strength I'm trying to improve on. Very cool. Very cool. Now, um, obviously all of the guests that come on the podcast only, you know, want to be a guest after first clay pulls your teeth to do it or you know, other, other forms of abuse. But, um, I know the waterboarding is another one true. Um, but they want to be asked and they want to borrow my time machine. So if I was able to lend you a time machine and you could go back to, and I'll leave it open ended to if you want to do it, you know, right when you got a hold of those accounts when you were 18 or it was after you kind of lost money in the penny stocks, whenever you want to go back to, what is one piece of advice you would give yourself if you're able to use that time machine and go back to them? Uh, just to study, like, and I would have, I would like to tell myself how much I would have lost and then just allot that all to education because you're going to pay a lot more than that if you don't. True. Market tuition is very, very expensive. It's real. It's not a fake thing, and you might think it's cliche. It is a real thing. I can assure yep. you of that. Yeah, yeah. market tuition definitely exists. So, yeah, that, that's good, solid uh, advice, and I, th- I, think, I think that's pretty much what everybody always says. Is, you know, I wish I would have actually learned how to do more, and we've used this analogy before. You know, if somebody operates on somebody with brain surgery and says, oh, crap, I just killed this person, man. If I could go on a time machine, I wish I would have went to medical school and actually learned <laughs> how to do this stuff because that probably wasn't a good decision. But uh, yeah, so good advice. Well, we're going to transition into some uh, interesting, fun questions. Um, and I might change this up a little bit just because I'm curious, but we have to definitely ask this question. But what is your favorite movie? Oh, you know, I don't, I can't really think, but. I've seen Star Wars, the new one, like three times already. I've seen it twice. So that's like the only movie I can even think about that's like even on my mind right now. And I've seen so, so your many favorite more. movie is the newest Star Wars. That's what you're telling me. The Force Awakens. That's the, I mean, it's real. I don't think it's that, I don't know. He's got a recency effect. He's thinking of yeah, that because yeah. he just saw it. Yeah. All right. Well. The Star Wars The Force Awakens, you know that if you ever want to change it, then I guess you'll just have to come back at a later time and do Does another interview with you? us. So no, nah, I mean that's I it was a good movie. I don't know if it was the best movie of all time, but I, I don't know if it was Braveheart worthy, but uh It wasn't I mean, dumb and dumber worthy for Clay. So. Yeah, it was I mean it's definitely not the, the level of dumb and dumber. But here's a question that we, we don't usually ask, but what got you into real estate and how long have you been in real estate? Um, my parents have been doing, having rental properties my entire life. So since I was like probably 10, I've been working on tearing up carpets and painting and whatever. And so that whole time when I was transitioning into stocks, I was also shadowing to try to do physical therapy. And I saw that it was going to be the setup of that job was going to be exactly like the job I'm working now. And I hated that. So I was like, I would rather work and try to do what I love, which is the real estate and stocks, then kind of do something I might not like. And it takes, you know, so. And that definitely kind of fits in with, you know, you wanting to be your own boss because you can definitely do real estate and, you know, kind of handle that yourself, make your own hours and, you know, you get what you put into it for sure. So definitely respect that hustle and that spirit. But um, what would you say is your favorite meal and dessert? 
Meal and dessert. I would say um, some marsala chicken for meal and dessert. I really like tramazoo. That's a yeah. That's and that's uh, like the like yogurt type stuff, isn't it? It's like the Italian coffee cake dessert. No. Oh yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Right? <laughs> they don't have it out there in uh, rural Michigan, apparently. Yeah, I, I guess we don't have that out here in the woods. But um, and final fun question here: uh, Where is some place you would like to visit someday? Australia for sure. Definitely Any reason Australia. why? No, I mean, just... You want to fight a kangaroo? Yeah, well, the kangaroos are cool for sure. And then, actually, there's, uh, there's like, this newscaster on YouTube who's hilarious. His name's, like, uh, Carl Safanovic, I think. So, I don't know. He, he, everyone just seems hilarious there. So, that, that whole thing <laughs> makes me want to go there. I, I do. I have to just piggyback. I remember back at Ohio State in school, we had some i don't know she was like part of some australian club or something that was on campus because there's like a million clubs at ohio state and she's from australia and man just the way she talked i'm like this is the greatest thing ever so i i know what you mean like just oh and we have i'm not even gonna try an australian accent don't try yeah don't try for it yeah they're funny man it's like you know good day mate you know let's put another (laughs) shrimp on the ball bay and it's like are you trying to be funny but no, that's just how they talk. So we're getting Australian people. I get emails to, from people to our from Australia. Australian viewers out yeah. there and listeners out there. I apologize on behalf. <laughs> it's of a Clay. compliment. I it love the accent. Compliment. I wish I could have one. And so. I'm not gonna lie. I was trying to. Uh, I'm still planning on going on a motorcycle trip across Australia because I just think it's a really cool place and there's a lot of cool stuff to do there as well. But um, uh, last question for you, Chase. What do you think? Three words, what do you believe are three words that should be associated with a successful trader? I'm trying to think of one good word just to say getting in when you need to. Shrimp on the bobby. <laughs> yeah, one good word to get in when you need to. Uh, I would execution. say, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's no I, execution. That's good. Patience, I would say, because you got to be patient. You got to let it, but a part of patience is also the execution of it. So, yeah, I, I'll buy that all day long. That's a, that's a good word. We've never had execution. So, well played. And hey, man. Thank you for hanging out with us this evening, and I guess we'll be hanging out some more here in just a little bit. But thanks for uh, stopping by and uh, you know just telling us about your story. Thank you all for having me. Yeah, it was a good time, and I'm sure we'll have you back at some point. As uh, you know, I thought this flowed real nice, and you seem like a, a good normal person. So for those of you listening, I'd like to make a few a little requests. If you're listening to this at the website, please click that share button, leave us a comment. Uh, we do read them, and uh, you know things like that. Uh, really do help us. You know, feedback goes a long way. If you're listening to this on iTunes or any of the other, uh, you know, media players out there, please leave us a rating, a ranking, and uh, you know, little clicks of the mouse like really do go a long way. And uh, you know, they just t- let us know that uh, Ches and I were not just kind of uh, kicking rocks doing this, wasting our time. Um, so feedback like that is always appreciated. So, with that being said, thank you for hanging out with us, and we will see you back for the next episode. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.